Well, good morning. It is the third Sunday of uh, Advent, and we are glad you are joining us today. We ask the Lord to bless you as you worship together one with another as we continue our preparations, not only for the celebration of our Lord's birth, but the anticipated return of him in glory as our king and as our judge. Today, just a couple of announcements. You'll notice that the first hymn that Carol just played through for us is Comfort, Comfort Ye My People. The words that we heard last week uh, from the prophet Isaiah to John the Baptist uh, who proclaimed that comfort. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Comfort is something that many people yearn for in their lives. A release from uh, their moments of suffering within this life. And today we want to remember uh, prayers of comfort specifically for Marilyn Bukar, who, uh, whose daughter died this past, uh, uh, just over um, what is it, eight days ago, um, last Saturday evening. And uh, also uh, for uh, Darlene Palumbo and her family as her mother died very unexpectedly earlier this week. Many people had had uh, medical procedures this week. Uh, Len Mikulajic is with us today. Um, uh, Scott Neeby also. Uh, Lenore Hughes and, uh, and then Todd Yoder, who's the uh, brother-in-law of um, uh, Fred Dwarning. Uh, they all had different procedures, and thanks be to God, they are all doing very, very well. And so continue to offer up prayers for those uh, on our prayer list throughout your week. As um, uh, you may have noticed when you walked in, there is a table in the narthex with the 2021 offering envelopes. If you uh, have not picked up your offering envelopes, just walk on back there after service, find your name alphabetically, grab your box, and we say thank you very much. Um, this morning, as we begin our service, let us turn our hearts and our minds to the wonderful gift of God, who is Christ Jesus our Lord, as we hear our prelude.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority... I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, Amen. The congregation may be seated for our readings.
The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday of Advent is from Isaiah chapter 61. Readings can be found on the back of your bulletin. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them the recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, and they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness." As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle for today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please rise in honor of our Lord's holy gospel and join with me in the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. And they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one whom you do not know, even though even he who comes after me the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. And these things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated for the singing of our hymn. John came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. Who are you? That was the question that the representatives from the Jerusalem Pharisees were sent to find out about this John, this son of the priest, Zechariah, this man who dressed odd down by the river Jordan, baptizing people. He was being questioned because, well, that wasn't part of the regular duties of priests or of Levites or of the Pharisees themselves. No, the priests, descendants of Aaron, they made the sacrifices for the people and they were ministers of God to the people. The Levites, well, they were caretakers of the temple furnishings and served as the temple choir directors and instrumentalists. And the Pharisees, well, they were teachers of the Torah with strict obedience to the law of God. And throughout the Gospels, we find them a people who were very hostile towards Jesus. Baptism was not on any of their list of functions in their roles. And so they wondered about this John. Who are you? They asked. Who indeed? Their questioning as we read the text, it feels more like an interrogation, demanding to know from John, what do you say for yourself? Are you the Christ? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Who are you? Now for any of these other three characters, the Christ, Elijah, or the prophet, baptism may have been seen by these religious leaders as an acceptable form of ministry, something they might expect from God's representatives. These people, they were watching, and they were waiting. They were waiting for the Christ, the promised Messiah of God. He would be the very one anointed by God who would make everything that was wrong with this world right again. He would be God's righteous king who would unite all people. He would come and release them from their earthly bondage 
and restore them to glory as a people. Oh, they were looking for the Christ. They were also looking for Elijah. If you remember, Elijah was taken alive into heaven. A chariot of fire carried him into heaven and into the very presence of God. And then 300 years later, the prophet Malachi proclaimed, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. Even at our modern day Seder dinners, there is a fifth cup of wine that is poured, and Elijah is invited to the meal. Throughout the Seder meal, the people have heard about God's redemptive work in releasing captive Israel from Egypt. But there in the pouring of the fifth cup, the people anticipate the redemptive work of the Christ, which Elijah will announce. The people were on the lookout for Elijah. In Deuteronomy, God promised to raise up a prophet like Moses to whom the people will listen, for in this prophet's mouth will be the very word of God. We read in Psalm 74, We do not see our signs. There is no longer any prophet, and there is none among us who knows how long. How long, O God, is the foe to scoff and to revile your name forever? Often, when Israel or Judah were in God's disfavor, the words of the prophets often became silent. The prophets had been now silent for 400 years since Malachi prophesied. The people were listening for a prophet. And so they came to John and they asked, Who are you? And John answered more so. The gospel writer states twice, John confessed. He spoke what he knew. He spoke what he had witnessed. And he said, I am not the Christ. I am not the Christ. John had already seen the Christ. As he baptized people, Jesus himself came and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And as he baptized the people, John declared, I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water that he, the Christ, might be revealed to Israel. And I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. And that was the sign that was foretold to John that he would see and he would recognize this to be the Christ, the Son of God. John confessed, I am not the Christ. But he also confessed, the Christ has come. Who are you? I'm not the Christ. But I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. John is the voice of preparation. John is the voice that calls to every individual to inwardly reflect upon the condition of their own heart. The very need for a Messiah speaks to the truth that man's heart is sinful. Jeremiah spoke Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. But then he describes man's heart as deceitful above all things and desperately sick. In fact, literally, the Hebrew there for desperately sick means incurably sick is man's heart with sin. Now we all know people in our own lives whom doctors have said, there's nothing more we can do. I can only give you a timetable of life expectancy. 
And in those moments, hope often is a commodity that seems lacking. And looking at the human heart, that is the condition of man. Hopelessly, incurably ridden with the disease of sin. So man's heart is sinful. And man's heart does not seek the Lord on its own. Psalm 10 reminds us that in our sinful condition, in our pride, the wicked man does not seek God. No, man desires simply to find his own way, by his own strength, by his own wisdom, by his own insight. Man is sinful. Man seeks his own way. Man is hostile towards God and actually cares nothing for his ways. Paul, a Pharisee before his conversion, writes in Romans that the mind of the flesh is hostile towards God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. The heart of man, diseased with sin, only desires his own desires. And that's how our sinful fallen nature is. Isaiah declares it very well. We all, all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And our own way, apart from God, only leads to death and hell. So John's voice is there in this wilderness that looks hopeless. His is the voice that calls the repentant to seek forgiveness. Sinful man by himself is lost to his own desires, his own passions, his own priorities. But John's voice calls us to see that God does not leave us in the wilderness to die in our sin but rather He is the one who has the cure for our sin. His Christ would bring forgiveness and the restoration as God's people for which they longed. John's voice is calling people to take a check on their own life and see if they are walking their own way or walking the way of the Lord. John is, as Jesus declares later, the voice of Elijah, preparing the people to see, to greet, and to follow their divine king, who is the very prophet of God, whose mouth declares God's own will. In answering, who are you? John declares that the one they seek is actually standing right among them. Jesus, who had been baptized, who was anointed by the Holy Spirit at his baptism, was among them, but unknown to them. In the book of Proverbs, we read of wisdom personified, taking her stand at the height of the road, making her presence known at the very crossroads where people gather and besides the gate of the town where the people enter. And at these places she calls out to the people, come and learn from me. And so Christ, who is the very wisdom of God in human flesh, calls from among man, come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. The anticipated Christ was not one coming with majestic fanfare. No, the Christ came instead with prophetic signs that the people were in need to be aware of. The people needed to remember these signs the Lord had foretold, to be watching for them, 
and then to see them. And as we will hear in just another 12 days, Jesus' birth came announced by angels to just simple shepherds and worshipped then by foreign magi. The Christ came but was unseen by most. Christ grew up and even as a man was not known yet stood among and lived among and served among the people who didn't recognize him. But the way he served, He would lead people in his way. He comes to the people, as we heard already from Isaiah, to bring to the poor good news. To come near and bind up those whose hearts are torn and broken. To declare to those who feel like they have no release that they have freedom from their chains and the prisons of this world to declare to hungering ears the work that God has done for them and to speak directly to those hearts that mourn comfort. John was there, getting the people ready to meet the Christ. And as he he baptized, the people unloaded their sins Jesus' own disciples would also be commanded to baptize. And in that baptism, in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there the Holy Spirit is given that faith would be created, that the person's feet are set upon the way of God. Those ways, that path, follows the Christ. God promised through Ezekiel, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove that heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk In my statutes, you shall be my people, and I shall be your God. In baptism, God does just that. As God's baptized people, he has done that for you already. If you have not been baptized, God desires to do that for you. For in that water, Attached to God's own promises, God cleanses all your sin. No longer do you then mourn over the failures of this life. No longer do you turn your face ashamedly away from God Almighty. But in that water, connected to the work of Christ on the cross, He died. And in that water, the debt of your sin is paid in full. In baptism, God declares you forgiven and declares you his own child. That is the good news that Jesus came to declare. This is the freedom Jesus came to provide you in his death and resurrection. This is how the Almighty God shows his love for you. He washes you clean of your sin. He changes your heart to begin beating in rhythm with his own desires. And he gives you his Holy Spirit to lead you along the way of the Savior. Jesus called for all people to prepare the way of the Lord in their lives. John called it, and Jesus calls it. We are called to see our sin and repent of it. And you know, John's call extends to us. In 1 Peter, we read that God has 
called you through the words of the prophets, through the words of the psalmists, through the apostles and the evangelists, and by the Holy Spirit working through the very word of God, he declares you his own child and Jesus' own disciple. Peter writes, you have been called to follow in Jesus' steps. And following in Jesus' steps, it leads you now out these doors into this world to be a voice crying out in this world. A voice that would often cause others to look at you and ask the same question, who are you? The crucified, resurrected Jesus. He still stands among the people of this world unrecognized. And the people are still looking for and longing for a Christ who will make everything right again. The people of this world are still hungering for the voice of divine authority to speak to them. The people are still awaiting someone to point them to God's Messiah. The voice today can be your voice, empowered by the Holy Spirit to communicate God's eternal love for them through you. Your voice is used to proclaim the favor of God in Christ Jesus to others. Your voice is used to confess who the Christ is. And your voice calls others to walk with you along the Savior's way. So the question is asked of you today. Who are you? You are one voice among many voices calling out in the wilderness of this world, calling out to others to follow the Christ. Amen. Would you please rise and join in one voice as we speak together our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus the Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate and he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sin. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Keep your saints from every folly that would turn them from your words of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sent John to proclaim the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Richly and daily forgive our sins and the sins of all believers. Bless our synodical leadership and all pastors in Christ. Gather and preserve your holy Christian church by your voice and send us faithful preachers who will not deny but confess your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Father, be the source of strength and comfort in every home. Bless the children of our families that every darkness would be lightened by your Son's gracious visitation. Especially grant your peace and comfort to the families of Marilyn Bukar and Darlene Palumbo 
during these days of loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give wisdom and success to our nation and its leaders. Preserve our land and its citizens in peace and harmony. Protect all who serve us, especially we pray for Lori Combs, Stacia Hackman, Joy Markle, Kim Murphy, Darlene Palumbo, Janet Polensky, James Roth, Sue Ryan, Kristen Smiley, and Holly Trevarthen Clark. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks in every circumstance for your kindness in Christ and the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life with him. We pray especially for those from our midst, Len Mikulajic, Lenore Hughes, Todd Yoder, Gary and Judy Reed, Lottie Reed, Karen Barron, Larry Reed, Cade Reed, Emma, Susie, Bertha Acoff, Alan Baldock, Karen Barron, Linda Coyne, Shirley Gleski, Jessica Hackett, Patrick Gum, Deb Javit, Carol Keller, Amy Kissel, Gary Lotz, Eleanor Mandau, Jack Marsh, Robert Melnick, Werner and Barbara Muse, the Mark Neeby family, Ryan Neeby, Scott Neeby, Greta Pate, Joan Pollard, Carl and Diana Roth, Tim Shane, Karen Swift, Ron Swift, Todd Trevarthen, Bonnie Voigt, those dealing with cancer, those suffering with COVID-19, those who are shut in, and a couple undergoing in vitro fertilization. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us faith, Lord, to believe the New Testament in your blood, to seek your holy supper for the forgiveness of our sins, and to confess your truth with honest hearts in communion with one another at this altar today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. And therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. For you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus. We beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. You alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship 
with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
we rise. This precious body and blood strengthen and preserve you in body and soul in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in his peace and his joy. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We join in singing our closing hymn. If the congregation would be seated for just a moment, I'm going to actually walk out into your midst as one you know. Thank you. You guys were paying attention. That was good. This past weekend has been the 50th wedding anniversary of Tim and Joan Bauer. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise. That as the psalmist says, you take the lonely and the isolated and you make them dwell in family. Lord, we thank you that in 50 years of marriage, that this family has remained strong. Strong because of the foundation of faith that they have placed in you. Continue to bless their union one to another with love that is expressed toward the other. We ask you to bless their union as they reach out as a couple to minister to their family, their grandchildren, and those neighbors that are around them. Continue to strengthen their love for each other as you strengthen their faith in you. Guard and keep them in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. Thank you.